Got it. All right, Grand Rising. How y'all doing this morning? The chat is filling up already. I like to see that people are already here trying to get this meditation in, uh, which is exactly what we need. All right. And uh, I have a lot of, okay, I got that, yeah. Okay, great. Oh, wow, I see people here from all over the world. Amazing, amazing. Looks good. I am uh, excited about this meditation. This is a Merkaba meditation. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about the Merkaba first before we get started. And I'm going to uh, set one more thing up here. Give me one second, guys and gals. Okay, I got that working properly. That's good. Give everybody one more minute to wake up and get in here. Oh, Hono says, on, the, on a trip from Arizona to Vegas. Wow, amazing. Wow, everybody here from all around the world. Australia is even in the house. Amazing. New York, everybody. Missouri, Los Angeles. All right, fantastic. Okay. Um, let me just put on my my 5G hat. I got like eight cell phones on my desk over here. So I'm working on a project that requires a whole lot of uploading for different social media platforms. All right. I think we have enough time now. We should be able to get started. We have enough people in here. Um, I didn't send out a text message this time because I was just curious to see how many people had set an alarm on their own. Um, just, you know, doing a little experiment just to see how many people were going to actually get up uh, through an alarm for their own self to get on the meditation. Um, the meditations are previewed, so they're locked in advance so that you can actually set the reminder bell. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and put on the notification bell so you can get a notification when we do go live. But again, the good thing is that um, the meditation is automatically saved on YouTube now, so you can just go back and watch it as many times as you want to. All right. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's get into this macabre meditation. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. <clears throat> Where's that tab at? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Chrome tabs. Window. Okay, one second. Yep. That is it there. And let's share this. This is the atomic structure of gold. This is the fundamental basis behind the most incredible configuration in the entire universe. It's the Merkaba. And so you can see that at the atomic level, we're talking about, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the most smallest things that you can look at under a microscope. Obviously, there are some things smaller than atom quarks and and such. but in terms of what we understand as basic physics, standard physics, uh, atoms are extremely tiny. And you need a, a, a microscope, a special kind of microscope, actually, to look at them, preferably an electron microscope. But when you look at the gold, uh, AU, which is on the elementary chart, this is what it looks like. It's actually a star tetrahedron. Amazing. Gold has a lot of uh, benefits to it. I don't know if, if you knew uh, about this, but in ancient times, if you look at, if you read the ancient tablets, you find that civilizations very long ago from another place came to this planet to mine this planet for resources. And one of the, one of the top resources were gold. And that's why we attribute so much value to gold. <clears throat> it's not because it's a rare element, because it's not rare, actually, to be honest with you. The earth produces gold just like the earth produces oil. 
Oil is the blood of the earth. But what happened was these uh, these people that uh, we 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 willingly helped mine this gold because we thought that they were our gods and things like that, cargo cults. It's well documented in ancient text. Um, they were using the gold for technological purposes, and we were using the gold for, they let us use the gold for adornment. So they gave us the attribution that gold had monetary value and adornment value <clears throat> so that we can continue to um, to work it for them. And, that, and by that mean, they assign value to it. <clears throat> so basically, um, you know, we've we still now to this very day attribute uh, adornment value and monetary value to gold. But if you look at the sciences, if you look at astrophysics and you look at rocket science and you look at space technology, <clears throat> you discover that what we're using gold in mostly everything. Gold cannot you, you cannot have a space agency without gold. You need gold to um, create. Um, the different types of circuit boards that need to be used. <clears throat> you need gold to reflect radiation. You need gold uh, to uh, make the connections between microchips and microprocessors. It's a very good conductor of electricity. <clears throat> and so uh, if, you know, if you have a wire made of pure gold and you put electricity in on one end and measure the output on the other end, you're going to find the same uh, amount of cu uh, current being carried from throughout the entire wire. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I got to drink a little water. If you don't do that, <clears throat> if you take um, if you take another wire, like for example, maybe a copper wire, and you put in input electricity on one end, and you measure the output on the other end, you're going to find that you won't get the same exact amount of current. And the reason why is because you're going to lose current due to friction. But in gold, whatever you get put in, you get out. 100% of what you put in, you get out. This is why, you know, one of my greatest products on my website is the monatomic gold water. You drink that water and it speeds up the electrical processes in your brain by inserting all of these uh, AU uh, atoms in a way that uh, these you have you have literally millions of Merkabas inside of your skull, uh, moving and helping to transport information at a much higher and faster speed. Also, transport healing to different parts of the body. It's on my website. It's the uh, it's the uh, gold water that I sell there. <clears throat> but <clears throat> boy, I tell you, my ass is acting up a little bit today. <clears throat> History has talked about the Merkaba mostly as the vehicle that allows a person to ascend or descend into higher or lower worlds. But actually, the Merkaba, or if you read it right, it's Merkaba, is much more than just a vehicle of ascension. It can really be anything, since its primal pattern is created uh, in all things, in all universes, both visible and invisible. You can find out more about that in the ancient secret of the flower of life, volume one and two. You know, I like to provide resources. In the Bible, there's a reference to Ezekiel and the wheels by which Ezekiel ascended into heaven. <clears throat> remember, remember, Ezekiel <clears throat> was actually abducted, um, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, by aliens, in my opinion. I think that's what happened. If you read the book of Ezekiel, you discover that uh, these people came down <clears throat> and they actually put him inside of a ship and took him away. And if you really um, analyze the information, uh, you know, if they came down in a, in a Merkaba and counter-rotating tetrahedron style with other technological pieces added onto it. And they lifted him off and they took him to meet this master <clears throat> who gave him specific instructions on what to say to the people of Israel. And then he had those same people transport him in the Merkaba to that land to deliver the message. One of the earliest accounts of an abduction <laughs> in, uh, in history. And so it's pretty interesting there. <clears throat> so one meaning is chariot, which is a vehicle. The other is throne of God. And when the two definitions are combined, the true meaning comes to life. In ancient Egypt, this primal pattern was called the Merkaba. 
It was also called by three words, not one. Myrrh meant a kind of a light that rotated within itself. Ka meant spirit. And in this case, referring to the human spirit, Ba meant the, the human body. Though it could also mean the concept of reality that the spirit actually holds. So what is actually encasing the spirit into the avatar body is the Ba. And so the entire word in ancient Egypt referred to a rotating light that could take the spirit and body from one world into another. And ironically, like I said before, the atomic structure of gold in the geometric shape is in the geometric shape of a star tetrahedron, <clears throat> which is pretty amazing. Being that it's like one of the highly, high, most highly sought after elements. So um, just a little history lesson, just a little tidbit there <clears throat> on gold. Now, today we're going to do a Merkaba meditation. And uh, this is going to be 11 minutes and 11 seconds. <clears throat> this Now, you can put this on loop. You can play it back however you want to do it. But what's interesting is a couple things are going to happen. The first thing is, as we get into our breathing pattern today, you know, 8 to 10 seconds inhaling, 8 to 10 seconds exhaling, we're going to get to a great breathing pattern. We're going to see that bowl in our mind, and we're going to begin to empty that bowl of thoughts by envisioning a hand reaching into our mind and removing the thoughts. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> we're going to, once we get our thought patterns down, once we get the thoughts reduced and the chaos reduced in our mind, we're then going to envision a star tetrahedron, a counter-rotating star tetrahedron, two intersecting pyramids, one up, one down, creating a star, one spinning one way, one spinning the other way. That is going to be your macabre. If you envision it in your mind, it's yours. It's the one that your consciousness has created specifically for you. <clears throat> and so you're then going to walk over and you're going to get into the macabre. So I'm going to guide the beginning of the meditation here. Of course, I have to clear my throat first. <laughs> and then... Um, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into this Merkaba meditation. Okay. <clears throat> so let me clear my throat for a second because <clears throat> this is getting a little annoying, but every now and then, maybe twice or three, maybe three times a year, my asthma acts up just a little bit <clears throat> and I got an increased amount of colloidal silver that I drink every day from one tablespoon to three. And that usually clears it up for me. But, um, I feel like I'm good to go now. So we're going to get started on this Merkaba meditation. And uh, make sure your speakers are plugged in, your earbuds are on, or at least that you have the sound up as we get into this. And focus on your breathing. So we're looking at a tesseract in a flower of life. The Merkaba is encased into the flower of life. And we want to focus on our breathing. We want to inhale 8 to 10 seconds. Exhale 8 to 10 seconds. Taking very deep, strong breaths. Breathing in the prana and exhaling the chaos. As you get into your breathing patterns, you want to start to see a bowl in your mind. And just envision a hand reaching into that bowl and removing all of the thoughts, taking all of the thoughts out of your mind, removing them, getting rid of the chaos, getting rid of the entropy. Clearing the mind and focus on synchronicity between the brain and the heart, brain-heart coherence. As your mind is being emptied and your brain and heart are aligning and you're focusing on your breathing, I want you to start to envision a star tetrahedron, counter-rotating star tetrahedron, a Merkaba, a light vessel. That is actually your light vessel projected 
holographically from your own consciousness specifically created just for you resonating to your avatar frequency At some point when you're consciously ready, step into that star tetrahedron. Step actually inside of it. And once you're in synchronicity with the counter-rotating field, the torus field, you will begin to lift off. Just let it take you. Let it take you where it wants to take you. Allow yourself to feel that shift in movement within the frequency and allow yourself to lift off. Allow the Merkaba to take you on a trip.
Okay, guys, that was the Merkaba meditation. Let me stop sharing my screen here. And get back into the studio. That was the uh, 11 minute, 11 second version of a Merkaba meditation. Now, in classes that I teach, um, I would do this meditation for at least 30 minutes minimum and sometimes as much as an hour and a half, sometimes even two hours. Uh, so the beautiful thing about this is that you can stream this on YouTube for free. You can play it on your Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, whatever music platform you have, and you can put it on a loop and auto replay. And so you can go as long as you want. You can replay it for hours if you need to. But it's a great meditation. Uh, I know that when I did this live for 30 minutes in Egyptian mystery school that I taught at Dame Dash Studios in 2019, uh, we had people coming out of the experience with a lot of great um, insight. And also after 30 minutes, realizing that they really had, you know, had traveled somewhere. One, one person jumped up and sa said that they felt like they came up out of the ocean, uh, which is pretty interesting. So, um, yeah, just an amazing thing. So the Merkaba meditation, it's another one of the meditations that you can do. You know, every week we try to do something different. This week is the Merkaba. Last week it was the, uh, I think it was a gong bath. The week before that we did the, um, uh, what we do the week before that? We probably did the Om, the 111 Om chant. Um, so every week I try to give you guys a little something different in terms of a meditation. Uh, I appreciate all the great comments that I've seen in here. I, I thank you and I love every single one of y'all. I saw somebody in here that was dropping some negativity and some negative comments. And I know I don't talk about Jesus that I'm too smart for my own good. Well, you know, that person should just start a platform where they want to talk about Jesus. This you know, on this platform, we're talking about spirituality and reality. Um, and the person's name that he's referring to, the name wasn't even Jesus anyway. The name is Yeshua. So at least if you're going to if you're going to recognize somebody, call them by their real name and uh, give them the respect on their name that they deserve, because the name Jesus actually doesn't even exist. It's a fabricated name. But anyway, Yeshua was a great man. And I do mean man as an M-A-N. And uh, when he. Uh, if you read the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, you discover that when he disappeared from the modern day Bible um, at the age of 12, he then made his way into Egypt, where he began to learn the Egyptian mysteries. And he studied the Egyptian mysteries, which were taught by Thoth, the Atlantean priest king known to the Egyptians as the one of the top Netiru. And after he left Egypt, he went to Tibet. And this can be confirmed by the Dalai Lama. They have the original text of him arriving in Tibet. He went to Tibet to learn the mystic arts. He went to Tibet to learn Reiki healing. He went to Tibet to learn Qigong. He left Tibet and went down to India to perfect uh, the mystic arts, teachings and understandings. All the way teaching reincarnation the whole way back. And then he shows back up in the Bible writing in on the, well, God calls his son out of Egypt because he can, he makes his way back to Egypt. And then he shows up in the Bible riding on the back of a donkey. So you see, I know a lot about Yeshua. Uh, he was taught by Thoth, also known as Tehudi, Jehudi, Tehudi, Quetzalcoatl, Lord Pakal, Kukul Khan, Wang Di, many, many names, Mercury, Odin. Um, he was uh, known all around this planet, Thoth Amabi in Australia. He's a global phenomenon and the original builder or the original architect, I should say, of the pyramid structures around the entire planet. And that he started the very first mystery school where he would only have adept initiates invited in. And Yeshua was one of those adept initiates. When I, The last time I was in Egypt, I went to the house of Yeshua where he actually lived with his mother and it's a shrine now because the original bed that he used to sleep in is still there. I'm going back in a few weeks. I'm going to go spend almost a month there. I'm leaving on August 29th. I'll be back at towards the end of September. And I'll be taking another visit to Coptic Cairo to visit that house once again and document it this time in 4K. And uh, the cross, the symbol of the cross existed long before 
uh, crucifixions even existed. The symbol of the cross has to do with a planetary crossing, and it's well known in Coptic Cairo. The origination of uh, the beginnings of monotheistic Christianity, which had nothing to do with following Jesus Christ, but actually following an ideology that only one God existed. <clears throat> so it's a lot more deeper than what the gentleman was trying to refer to. And uh, if he thinks I don't know anything about uh, my books, I can I, I assure you I'm a super expert on all of this and have been for a very, very long time. And so anytime you want to know information, instead of making accusations, just ask. And I'll be more than happy to share the truth with you and give you the sources to back it up. By the way, the Gospel of the Holy Twelve costs about $1,300 to $1,400 because it's the, the book is no longer in publication. And so you can only get used copies of it. Sometimes you can find a good used copy, you know, for uh, only a couple hundred dollars. I like to have mint condition copies of my books if I can find those. So I spent the full price on the text. You can also find the, um, the PDF online. I just don't trust online PDFs because they're open to editing. I do like to get my hands on actual publications uh, before I, you know, use anything or quote anything from text or information. Uh, but yeah, the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, uh, <laughs> it uh, will enlighten you to a point where you may not even want to go. Uh, but facts are facts and we can't run away from them. We're in the age of information. So now ignorance is actually made up by you. It's your own excuse, uh, your own excuse for not learning and wanting to grow as a person, as a human being, as a spiritual being that can connect directly to source. We don't need a middle man to connect directly to the divine spark. Why? Because the divine spark is already inside of us. In order to get to heaven, you need to travel to inner space. There's nothing externally that's going to save you. There's no external being. There's no external deity that's going to come and rapture you away to this divine heaven. The only way to get there is through going inside. And when you go inside and you access and go to the inner space where the true spark of divine source energy lo is located, then and only then will you discover that heaven is already inside of you. Hell is already inside of you as well. Hell was added to the Bible by the Roman Catholic Church as a, as a location on the exterior. But hell is a state of mind. Heaven is a state of mind. And our mission is to bring heaven to earth by going inside and fixing ourselves internally. And then what happens on the inside manifests on the outside. If you look at the nature of the world today, and you look at the chaos, you look at the, uh, the wars and the um, genocide that's happening right now as I'm speaking, people are being killed in the streets all around the world, primarily right now in Africa is going crazy. Um, you look at the, the consciousness of the people on the planet, the combined co collective consciousness, and you find that what's going on inside of the collective consciousness, inside the avatar bodies, is what's manifesting on the outside, it's spilling over to the outside. If you have a, a house that is junky, if your office is junky and messy, if, if your car is disgusting and filthy and junky, what's happening is on the inside of you, you have a lot of chaos, you have a lot of anxiety, you have a lot of um, uh, entropy going on inside. And it, it fills up inside the body to the point where it spills over into your exterior surroundings. So what we see happening on the outside world is just a reflection of what's going on inside. And so when you take the collective consciousness on the planet and you, um, you, you, you can analyze collectively what's going on inside uh, the human body on an average basis per person by looking at the exterior uh, of, of what the world looks like right now. And that will give you a picture of what's happening inside of us. So when you see when you when you begin to see peace spread through the planet, when you begin to see unconditional love spread through the planet, that means more people are becoming conscious to the point where they understand the real fundamentals, the hermetic principles are being enacted really in their lives and they're becoming better people. And as we gradually become better people and more conscious, you'll start to see a lot of these wars and these and these tortures and these politics and everything else. You start to see those things dissipate. 
It just takes time. So it's a, it's a long-term battle. It's not something that is going to happen overnight. But little by little, gradually, it'll happen. And so we have to be mindful and understand that each, each and every one of us is taking part collectively in this, in this, um, this mass global awareness that is either going to showcase the unconditional love that's happening inside of us, or it's going to showcase the turmoil and the, uh, and the pain and the agony and the fear and the ignorance that's happening inside of us. <clears throat> and so right now, when you look around the world, unfortunately, mostly we're seeing a lot of the uh, the lower frequency vibration. Gradually, what we are seeing, though, is it beginning to change as people are seeking more conscious information, trying to become more spiritual and direct connect directly with the divine. And as people are beginning to start to come on meditation Mondays and global meditations and do meditation in their own time and seek wisdom and knowledge on their own and read books and buy books on their own, <clears throat> you know, uh, and for the purpose of research and investigation, for the purpose of gaining more knowledge of self, <clears throat> you know, so we're on a path. Uh, and I think we're on a path that can't be stopped. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill right now. That snowball is very small compared to the global consciousness. But as it continues to move down the hill, it's gaining mass and it is getting bigger. And eventually it's going to be um, a phenomenal place. We're going to he head into a golden age. It may take some time. And a lot of us are planting seeds that are going to grow into massive, massive trees with huge shade, huge shade trees. But we'll never sit in the shade of those trees because by then we will already be back in the reincarnation cycle. And when you reincarnate, don't think that it means that you're going to come back in a future time because uh, time is an illusion. Clocks exist, but time doesn't exist. Only clocks exist. And so what that means is... Um, you can come back in a past time. You can come back in a present time. You can come back in a future time. And you can come back even in a different uh, region of the universe. And it doesn't mean that you're going to always come back as a male or a female. You can come back as a different gender, a different race. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, be wary of people that bash races because karma is a very strange thing. You could come back as a race of a person that you used to bash so that you can experience that pain so that you can learn from that pain. So we have to be mindful of everything we do and everything we say. And we have to be mindful of our own ignorance a lot of times because we have to realize that uh, we think once you think we, you, you know, you, you, you've done everything and then you realize that you haven't even read more than 50 books you know, you have to say to yourself, well, I, I got a lot more to go, you know, yeah, but even I have a lot more to learn. <clears throat> I have three full passport books full of stamps, full. I'm working on filling up my fourth passport book. <clears throat> and that means that I'm traveling the world to study and research and learn. I'm heading out of here on Thursday to Athens, Greece. And I'm going to spend a couple of weeks in Greece learning, learning about Athena, learning about the ancient Greeks and how their ties are to the Anunnaki, making my own synchronistic, um, you know, theories come to life and seeing what works here, what works there, getting some homegrown archaeologists to talk to and some homegrown guides to talk to to get their side of what they've been taught, what the verbal histories have been handed down. And then I'm going to sail over to Santorini and take a bus over to Akrotiri, one of the oldest, most ancient uh, Atlantean civilizations that were buried by volcanic ash, which is now being dug up. So I'm going to go on an archaeological dig site for a few days and spend some time there documenting the dig, documenting the site, documenting the technology and the building structure techniques and analyzing it so I can make my comparisons to other ancient civilizations uh, that had the capabilities of building megalithic structures that were imbued with advanced technology so I can see if there's a connecting link. Verifying these things for myself, not going off of what somebody said in, in the back of a pulpit, not going off of what somebody said on a TV uh, show, not going off of what somebody, a friend or a relative told me since I was born. But I like to go out there and get the truth for myself and come up with my own conclusions. 
And then I take my conclusions and I share them with the world to the best of my ability. <clears throat> and I think that everyone should um, should follow suit. You know, one of the biggest things that um that I've discovered along this path of enlightenment is when you're young, you hear a voice in your head. And because of the way you've been programmed to think, you're thinking that it's an outside voice coming in to talk to you. Once you go on a spiritual path of enlightenment, that voice begins to morph. And after many, 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 many years and probably tens of thousands of meditations and countless hours of flying to these ancient sites and meeting with people and sitting in the Holy of Holies and meditating inside the Holy of Holies in Egypt and and, uh, and, and underground crypts and all these places that I've been with all these high energy you know, frequencies and coming to my own conclusions, the voice has morphed now into realizing that the voice is actually my own voice. And I think that that voice will be your own voice for every individual person, that the voice that you've been hearing in your head the whole time that you're, that you're uh, um, attributing to an exterior entity has actually been your own voice the entire time. And when you grow and, and, and mature into a higher level of consciousness, when you become an adept initiate and you begin to understand the intricate workings of how consciousness works and how ascension, the ascension process works, and you begin to raise your consciousness into a 5D realm, you then real, realize that it's been you talking to yourself the entire time. Because the same divine spark that created everything in this universe is in every atom in your body. And so you, so you yourself are actually divine. You yourself are actually a fractal of God. And so the power is already in you. And so I just want to leave you guys with that word. <clears throat> I'm actually thankful that that gentleman was leaving that, spewing that neg negativity in there to give me the insight to come in and, and talk on this for a quick moment. And uh, I want everyone here, here to have a fantastic, phenomenal week. I want you guys to uh, focus on positivity, focus on uh, changing yourselves. I learned something from Robert Edward Grant when I did my podcast with him a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> it aired last week on my podcast platform. He said, see the change you want to be in the world. And instead of be the change, he said, see the change. He, he switched it up, a little tweak on it. And what he was saying was that we first must see it to actually create it because we manifest our reality. We literally manifest it. So if we're manifesting our reality, we want to see and envision the change because on the consciousness platform, just like you have all these platforms, you have the social media platforms, you have the video platforms. Well, the original platform, the OG platform is the consciousness platform. And on that platform, whatever you think of becomes reality in the other dimensions. So to see the change first, to become uh, the person that helps to create the reality and then step into the reality. So you see it first and then you step into it, thereby manifesting it. So I see this planet as becoming a heaven on earth. I see the people as becoming people filled with unconditional love and hate. I see people as becoming more educated and the ancient mysteries and the ancient arts and the ancient ways and the true spiritual knowledge. I see people falling away from religious dogma and finding their own direct connection to the divine. I see it. And so I just continue to put the energy behind what I see. I'm stepping into and walking in, uh, in that, in that moment every single day and little by little, gradually it's happening everywhere. So just be a part of the actual manifestation. And, uh, and instead of stepping out and watching it and then trying to be a part of it, but actually seeing it happen first in the mind, living it in the mind if it's just reality. Just like in my Manifest Destiny workshops that I've done in my classes, I teach people to do a manifesting um, meditation, which we're going to do next week. It'll be a manifesting meditation. And in the manifesting meditation, whatever it is that you're trying to acquire, you actually believe it's already done. And in your manifestation meditation, you're living in that moment of whatever it is. If it's a house, you're in the house. You actually have the keys in your hand. You turn the lock on your own door that you own already and you walk into the house. If it's a car, you crank it up with your keys and you drive around. You go visit friends and family members, show them your new car. 
If it's a relationship, you are out on a date. Maybe you're going for a romantic walk on a beach with that person. Or even if you don't even know the, the face, you have the you have the outline, you have the shadow. It's there. Something is there. There's another person there that you're with. So there's various different techniques that we use to help manifest reality. And we'll be doing that next um, next Monday at Meditation Monday. I'll put up the premiere probably sometime today and it'll be ready to go. All right. I appreciate every single one of y'all. I love y'all. Stay positive. Uh, don't let the negativity bring you down. Don't let the trolls bring you down. Don't let the people that think they know everything bring you down. <laughs> just keep on flowing. Get in your flow state and just flow with it, man. Just flow. Be confident in what you do. Be confident in what you are capable of. And don't forget to research, study, uh, and improve your knowledge consistently. And I mean consistently. I'm going to go to Greece and work on my knowledge base for a couple of weeks. Then I'm going to come back and do the trading options workshop, which is going to be phenomenal. Uh, and then I'm going to go out in the end of August. I'm going to go to Egypt and I'm going to be there for a long time, gaining more knowledge, gaining more wisdom. Because <clears throat> like Einstein said, once you stop learning, you start dying. And I have a lot more learning to do, a lot more learning to do. All right. So peace, guys. Thanks for hopping on this morning. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for putting up with my groggy throat in the beginning there, a little, little bit of asthma that was catching up to me. Happens every now and then, not too often, but it does happen. But thanks for your patience. Thanks for coming on here this morning. And I look forward to uh, dropping the podcast on Thursday. My next podcast episode comes out Thursday at 8 p.m. So look for that premiere. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, put on the notification bell, and share this video with as many people as you can. I appreciate y'all and I love y'all. Have a great, fantastic week.